please give another warm welcome to the man who gives us all hope for his courageous stand. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Listen to these familiar words. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. I never thought the day would come when Americans would experience adverse consequences for exercising their First Amendment right, the freedom of religion and the freedom to live it and speak it. Yet my case is but one of many where a government entity has imposed adverse consequences on an employee for publicly expressing their faith. During the week of Thanksgiving of 2014, I was suspended for 30 days without pay and subsequently terminated from employment as fire chief of the city of Atlanta after 34 years of faithful service in the fire and emergency services industry. Seven of those years were served as fire chief for the city of Atlanta, a city that I love very dearly, under the leadership of the Honorable Mayor Kasim Reed, whom I still respect and honor in the Lord. The action against me came as a result of writing a faith-based book for a Christian men's Bible study. The book was titled, The Question That God Asked Adam in the Garden, Who Told You That You Were Naked? In the book, I described marriage as a union between a man and a woman and spoke of the issue of sexual sin according to the scripture that many Christian men are still challenged with today. The free expression of the centuries-old biblical truths about marriage and sex cost me my career. However, my story didn't begin with my termination from employment with the city of Atlanta. It began when I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana in 1960 at Confederate Memorial Hospital. It's a story of the stereotyped at-risk family, a single mom with six children on welfare and food stamps living in a government project. It's a story of a stereotype that evolved into a prototype of what can happen in an American family whose values are rooted in faith and nurtured in patriotism in the United States of America. And I want to explain that a little bit. Poverty is a terrible thing. And I realized that at a very early age growing up in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I did not want to be poor when I grew up. I can remember times, ladies and gentlemen, my mother would tell us to keep every pot and jug in the house full of water. She knew she received a cutoff notice from the water company, and it would be a matter of days before the water would turned out, to be turned off. So we used the pots and jugs to bathe with, to cook with, uh, and to take, ba to, 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 to take baths with and to drink. There were times when the electric was turned off because mama didn't have enough money to pay the electric bill and we used to light our home at nights with candles which was very dangerous. Having food stamps we had a lot of groceries at the beginning of the month but six kids unsupervised in the afternoons because our mama had a little job working at a dry cleaners we went through those groceries pretty quick and oftentimes at the end of the month mama only had enough money to buy mayonnaise and bread and so we would have bread rabbit syrup on toast for breakfast we would have mayonnaise sandwiches for lunch and mayonnaise sandwiches for dinner. And because all the pops and Kool-Aid were gone, if we wanted something sweet to drink, we put a couple of teaspoons of sugar in a cold glass of water, and we had sugar water with our mayonnaise sandwiches. Poverty was a terrible thing. Also, at an early age, one Sunday after church, my brothers and sisters and I 
We were laying on the front room floor of a shotgun house that we had to move to because we couldn't afford to live in the projects anymore. We were watching a little black and white TV with a coat hanger sticking out of the top of it, wrapped in some aluminum foil, and we heard the sound of sirens responding down the main street, Snow Street. We lived on rear Snow Street. And it was so loud, we sprang to our feet, opened the front door. Miss Maddie, who lived across the alley, her house was on fire. And as I watched those three, four firefighters that day, I looked at my mom, my brothers and sisters, and said, I want to be a fireman when I grow up. It was also in that alley that I realized just how awful it was not to have a daddy living at home. And I used to go to church, the Galilee Baptist Church, early enough on Sunday mornings some men had cars, not all of them had cars, but I would watch those men drive up with their nice cars, and they would get out in suits, and they, was look, they were looking so handsome, and I wish I had a daddy like that. Their wives would get out, and they would be so beautifully, nicely dressed, a whole lot nicer dressed than my mother was able to dress herself. Their children would get out of the car, about the age of my brothers and sisters and me, a whole lot nicer dressed than we were dressed, and I dreamed and had a vision of what family I wanted, and I wanted a family when I grew up. The grown-ups in our neighborhood used to tell us, or ask us all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? I knew my answer. I wanted to be a fireman. I wanted a family, and I did not want to be poor. And this is what they would tell us. Your dreams will come true in the United States of America if you believe in and have faith in God. If you go to school and get a good education, if you respect grown-ups and treat other children like you want to be treated, they said your dreams are going to come true. As a Christian, faith and patriotism was instilled and nurtured in me all of my life, and hope in the Constitution of the United States of America assured us that one day our dreams will come true. Living out my faith has become a way of life and has caused all of my childhood dreams to not only come true, ladies and gentlemen, but to be greatly exceeded. It is by faith and patriotism. I have a beautiful family. I married my fourth great girlfriend, and in June we celebrated 33 years of holy matrimony. We have three vibrant young American children, Tiffany, Kelton, and Camille, who all graduated from college, the first ever in my family. My son is a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps. By faith and patriotism, we broke the cycle of poverty in the family history of the Cochran family. My children have never known what it's been like to be on welfare or food stamps or to live in a government housing project. My Christian praying mother used welfare and food stamps as a hand up and not just as an entitlement and a handout. It's by faith and patriotism I became a firefighter in Shreveport, advanced through the ranks to become fire chief in Shreveport, the same city I, my dream was born. I was served as fire chief under Mayor Shirley Franklin and Mayor Kasim Reed, and I was appointed to the highest fire official in the United States of America as the United States Fire Administrator through faith and patriotism. <laughs> However, in 2014, the free expression of that same living faith and patriotism ended my childhood dream come true fairy tale career. In 2015, Americans are forced to choose between keeping their jobs to take care of their families or living out their faith. Having to choose in the United States of America. But in 2016, we the people of the United States can no longer ignore this disturbing threat to religious freedom as we have in the past. Our passive approach to fighting for religious freedom has contributed to the destruction of the very foundations of which our nation was established. 
freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the sanctity of life, the family, and marriage. And as the scripture says, if these foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do and what will America look like in 2020? We, the people of the United States, people of all faiths, must focus our attention and unite our efforts as one nation under God and focus our efforts on who will emerge as the leader with the courage and capacity, the faith and patriotism to set the United States on fire with faith and patriotism to establish and ordain our Constitution for all citizens of the United States of America. Thank you for your continued support and for all of your prayers and for your support of the Alliance Defending Freedom.